Hi everyone and welcome to the tutorial for The Mystery by Tommy Emanuel. As I feature my top tier patrons, I also want to add that there is now a PayPal donate link for those of you who want to make a contribution to the channel without joining up on Patreon. However, if you're looking for tablature files, notation files or early access to other videos, Patreon is still the way to go. Recently I put up a poll on YouTube and a separate one on Patreon and asked all of you to vote on your favorite Tommy Emanuel song out of a list of songs that were already requested on the channel and this one was by far the most popular on Patreon. I made a top 10, I took the first 6 songs on Patreon and added 4 more from the YouTube list and that gave me a nice and uh, top 10 with lots of variety but I give priority to the Patreon songs, so here we are. And man, those guys really made me work from the get-go. The Mystery is a unique song, I had to start from scratch, I didn't know the song. And the song offers a lot of unique challenges uh, and I hope to explain all of them in full in this video. I'm pretty much always in doubt whether I should improve something or change something to make a tutorial work better. but. This tutorial is an extremely uh, rare case. I'm actually really, really pleased at how this turned out. Okay, so let's get to work. Now, first a few pointers. The guitar is in a bit of an alternate tuning this time. So you have to drop down your low E string to a D. Then you have to drop down your low A string to a G, which gives you a G sixth tuning. And then you have to slap on a capo at the fourth fret. Now normally I would make the tutorial without the capo uh, because it's easier to understand the fingering, not always having to count up two or three or four extra frets. But this time the use of the capo is so instrumental in making the song sound right that I didn't have any other choice but to use it for uh, the tutorial as well. That means that each number down in the tablature you have to add up four extra frets to get to the correct position. This also put me in sort of a, a, a tough spot, a bit of a dilemma. Normally I would have done this tutorial with my concert model guitar, but that guitar doesn't have proper position markings on the front of the fretboard, which would make it a lot harder for you to follow along. So what did I do? I took my uh, trusty old Martin Jumbo, uh, because this one has really clear position markers on the fretboard, but I have to admit this guitar isn't particularly uh, good friends with the capo on the fourth fret. So while this guitar sounds huge in open position, low rumbling bass notes, the capo on the fourth fret sort of chokes the nature of this guitar. It doesn't sound as good as it would do without the capo, but I guess for all of you it's actually uh, easier if you have a very clear view on all those position markers. The last thing you need is a plectrum and you'll be needing this one quite a lot. This is a very plectrum heavy song. You will need to use some hybrid picking as well, but the plectrum will be doing almost 99% of the work in this song. As soon as you have all of that together, you're good to go. Let's have a look at the intro first. That's the intro. Starting out with the uh, pinky, if you look at the absolute number on the guitar on the 13th fret and then the middle finger on the 11th fret in the tablature and I will have to check quite often that will be the 9th fret and the 7th fret. So. Make sure that uh, you use the middle finger and the pinky for this as you will have to add in a melody note right away when the verse starts and you will be starting from this position. That's the intro. Always the same picking pattern. This is where the technical aspect of what the intro and the verse consists of emerges right away. You're going to play alternate picking all the way through, 
but in a very strict manner, which means that on the beat you'll always be playing a downstroke and in between the beats you'll always be playing upstrokes. So that means one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On each beat a downstroke, in between the beats an upstroke. If sometimes you don't have to play a note on the beat, you, that means you will have to play two upstrokes right behind each other because that note on the beat disappears, which means the downstroke disappears, but you have to keep track of that alternate picking movement all the way through the song. It's a good example if you see, I, I'm now using this picking pattern, which is something Tommy does a lot when he plays the song live. Which is picked down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But on the original recording, Tommy leaves out the bass note. He only plays it the first time and then leaves it out the three other times, which gives you this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And as you can see, you're playing down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. Up, down, up. That's the original uh, recording on the mystery. Now, if you watch him play it live more recently, he just picks every note like I did in the intro. And this really establishes that picking pattern right away. I would suggest starting out with this, and then maybe if you want to play the intro exactly the same as on the mystery record, you learn how to leave out that one bass note afterwards. But this is the basic picking pattern. If you do it right, then you will probably see that the plectrum is always heading in the direction of the next string you have to play. So a downstroke on the A string makes the plectrum jump towards the G string. Picking upward on the G string makes the plectrum jump towards the D string. Picking downward on the D string makes the plectrum jump towards the B string. And picking upward on the B string makes the plectrum jump back towards the A string. As soon as you change one of those directions, you're making things a lot more difficult for yourself. One more time, that bar really slowly, and we're heading into the verse. the intro. We're keeping down this uh, chord shape as we're launching into the verse. We're going to play through it one time and then all of the explanation will follow right away. Now, there is a lot going on, but the picking pattern is the exact same thing all the way through. So we're starting on the same uh, chord shape we started out with for the intro. And then plucking on the fifth fret, which means the ninth fret on the guitar, that first melody note and pulling off to an open E string. So index finger on the fifth fret, ninth fret on the guitar, pulling off to the open string. The timing is actually quite important. You pick the melody note, then you play the first bass note again, and then you pull off. That's the picking pattern. One more time, really slowly. That's the full picking pattern. the next chord shape which looks a bit like a C chord uh, like, without adding in the middle finger and this is where the other challenge of this song is going to appear. A lot of these open string melodies actually feature melody notes on the G string that sound higher than the melody notes 
on the B string. And this will take some time to get your head around this. So this is not easy in the beginning. Most guitar players' brains are wired in that way. We need a higher sounding note, so we're moving to a thinner string. In this case, that is often not the case. So this really takes some time to memorize this uh, in the picking hand. But again, the picking pattern is the exact same thing on the beat downstroke in between the beats upstrokes. Now on the second chord, there are a few uh, empty spaces. There are a few upstrokes you actually have to skip. See, so in that first bar, there are two beats where there is no upstroke to be played. We are playing each and every downstroke. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The second bar is again the cross picking down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Tommy sometimes likes to fill in those gaps in the first bar with a soft strum. In the more recent uh, live versions, you can do that as well. Let's put those first four bars back to back with each other. last B string rings open as you move to the next chord, which is 9th fret with the ring finger on the A string, which means 11th fret on the guitar, 5th fret on uh, the D string, which means 9th fret on the guitar, and then hammering on with the pinky to the 11th fret as well uh, on the D string, which means, uh, which is, I'm sorry, it's really confusing, I know, 7th fret in the tablature, which means 11th fret on the guitar. And again, we're using that cross-picking pattern right away. And again, with that same trick, playing that C note, which would be a C in standard tuning on the fifth fret, while rubbing shoulders with that melody note on the D string, on the B string, on the B string, I'm sorry. This is gonna be really confusing throughout the whole tutorial. this uh, part there is no alternating bass line. So in the first four bars there were downstrokes on two separate strings. Because of the chord forcing there is no alternating bass line, which means that each downstroke is performed on the A string. So each downstroke except for that second hammer-on you'll be adding in the D string as well, but for the rest all on the A string. up uh, to round out that bar with. And the fingering you're using is hammering on with the pinky, index finger to the G string, to the open B string, playing the pinky on the D string, then removing the index finger from the G string and then removing the pinky to get that strum on the very last beat using nothing but the ring finger and the index finger. Then to the biggest stretch in the verse, which is sixth fret with the pinky and second fret with the index finger, which means on the guitar, 10th fret and sixth fret and you're hammering on straight away with the middle finger to the fourth fret in the tablature, which means eighth fret uh, on the guitar. And Tommy, I've seen him play it in both ways. He sometimes likes to play that hammer on, striking the strings with the pick, and sometimes he likes to play it with uh, hybrid picking. I like to play it with hybrid picking. It allows me to pop out that melody note just a little bit more than when I'm playing it with only the plectrum. And the rest of the, those two bars are mostly strumming. Don't pay too much attention at the exact amount of strums down in the tablature. Play this more freely than what is noted at the time below. You're moving from that hammer-on. 
the middle finger again. So you get the second fret up here. And then moving to the fifth fret, not moving down the pinky, but using the ring finger and using nothing but open strings, only adding in the second fret on the very last upstroke of the bar. last upstroke adding in the index finger. And then we're heading for the biggest chord of them all. We're leaving, leaving the ring finger and the index finger where they were. For the first chord we're only going to use open strings for the rest but after that you'll be adding in the pinky on the 5th fret on the G string and then a few uh, notes later you'll actually be adding in the middle finger on the 3rd fret on the B string as well. This is one of the biggest chords in the whole song. You'll only need that 3rd fret, that middle finger, just for a split second and after that you're releasing the whole chord. So no worries that you have to keep this down all the way through the bar. We're starting bass note strum nothing but open strings using those two fingers that are already there from the previous bar. Open B string, fifth fret on the G string. And we're playing that two times, exactly the same thing. And then adding in the middle finger on the third fret. And after the 3rd fret on the B string we're just leaving everything open and just playing an open B string and that concludes those two bars. And then just an open string moving to the next chord. Now first let me play everything we have up until this point back to back with each other because it's already quite a lot. looks like an F sharp power chord, which because of the alternate tuning actually is an E minor chord with an added 9. The chord without uh, this alternate tuning would play it like this. Open string, 2nd fret, 4th fret, but with the open tuning or with the alternate tuning it looks like this. And it's this little rhythmic trick that's all you have to watch out for in these two bars. You're playing the basic arpeggio, just moving down. This may be one of the few times where you're just using all down strokes. Uh, I like to uh, keep playing it just in alternate picking, but you could play it down, 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 down as well. I like to keep playing it in alternate picking. And then playing that little rhythmic fill on the fourth uh, beat, so one, two, three, four. You would expect this fill to be maybe on the first beat. That's what gives it that little rhythmic push. And then we're playing strums using nothing but this chord shape and all open strings. Again, don't pay too much attention at the exact number of strums in the tablature. Just play it as you feel it at this point. Playing that bar with moving back to the same chord we played right before this one. Exactly the same thing. Now we're keeping the middle finger away of this, moving to a wide arpeggio crossing, uh, four strings in total of a D dominant seven sus four chord. And this cross picking might be the difficult, the most difficult part if you want to stick to the alternate picking. Again, you could choose for down, 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 up, 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 just for a bit more natural flow. 
When I'm ending up on this point, the alternate picking movement is so ingrained in what my uh, right hand is doing that I just keep playing it in alternate picking as well. And moving down the ring finger. One fret, and then ending up with an open bass string and some loose strumming. So, I forgot to mention the fingering, but I hope this is clear. So, you're ending up from that one chord on the middle finger, adding in the ring finger and the pinky for the sus4 chord, shifting down the ring finger to the fourth fret for the uh, dominant seventh chord. With the strum, sorry. Again, loosely the strumming part, don't take that too, uh, or, or don't make that too ingrained, just as it feels right. With the chord right in front, so you can watch how the fingering uh, fits together. And that is the full verse. Now, it's almost easier to explain than a lot of other Tommy songs, but I do realize that this will probably take a lot of work. So most finger pickers are used to using their fingers, as the term would suggest, now, and this is quite heavy on the plectrum work. So I'm going to go one more time over the full verse, and then we're going to continue to the rest of the song. Here we go. This is incredibly, this may be one of the hardest pieces I've ever done to play slowly. So be rest assured, this wasn't take one. I needed quite a few. Now on to the second verse. Now the second verse is an exact repetition. Let me pick up the pace just a little bit, not near Tommy Emmanuel's uh, concert speed yet, but so you get a bit of a, a glimpse at what it sounds like once you speed this up just a little. just a little bit faster but I can I hope you can hear starting those things just to blend in a little bit more at very first first sounds a bit disconnected because of the very low tempo once you start pushing the tempo just a little bit all those overlapping notes start blending together and that's what gives the effect you need when you are playing this song now on to the next part which is the chorus and if you want to learn the chorus as well as the bridge and the ending, you'll have to head over to part two of the tutorial. Just click on the video link to head there straight away. <laughs> 